Hello everyone, Jacolo here and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering, a series in which I try and explain various engines in the game of yu gi -Oh! Bro, and sometimes do it well, while others fail miserably. Not sure about anyone else, but I like to listen some music when I'm feeling down, especially the Moonlight Sonata. That's why today's episode will be all about the musically talented Orchest engine. Shit! I don't know anything about how this engine works, especially now since Harp Horror got unbanned. I, I, I need to make a call. So then what you do is you, you banish the harp to summon the gear suit and... Jacola, what can I do for you? That was, um, surprisingly hostile. <laughs> uh, sorry, Patrick, for calling you out of the blue. You've got a minute? Uh, you know what? I can give you, like... Two minutes, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm finishing up a video and then I got, you know, the kids and stuff, so... Okay, so remember how Harp Horror was limited last month? No, I don't remember the greatest card in Yu-Gi-Oh's history coming back to one on the most recent list and me throwing things and losing my mind. I absolutely do not... Of course I remember it! Okay, my bad. Just turn down the sass and sarcasm of it. Anyway, the thing is, uh, I kind of need an orchest expert for a video, and, uh, well, you're the one that can- Shut up. Stop. You had me an orchest expert. <laughs> I'm here. Phew. Now with Patrick, the orchest expert on board, this video just got 100 times more factually correct. One more thing, though. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like this type of content. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers, and you can help me reach that goal. There's something special planned for this milestone, with more information coming in the future. Now, back to the episode. The musical army of orcas debuted in Soul Fusion all the way back in October 2018, and is composed of Dark Machine monsters which are of course part of the world legacy law because everything is a part of the world legacy law. <sighs> I hate this. My personal grievances with the world legacy aside, the main focus of the archetype is creating advantage with various engraved effects and using their extra deck monsters to provide additional utility. The archetype saw competitive success, especially during the famous toss format which is regarded by some as the best modern retro format, but I digress. It would consistently top regionals, national, ten double CQs throughout the entire 2019 season and the beginning of 2020. Until the January 2020 ban list, the engine remained unchanged. However, everything changed when the Harp Hora was banned. After that, the engine had a much smaller representation in the top cuts, as well as a much lower power ceiling. Thankfully, the January 1st, 2024 DCG ban list limited Harp Horror back to one, giving the engine a bit of its power back. Hilariously though, Harp Horror has been available at three copies, both in Duel Links and Master Duel this entire time, and it almost did nothing. Fuck you, power creep. Before we let Patrick get into the nitty gritty of the engine, let's look at the main players in this mechanical orchestra. Starting with a part of the orchestra engine that was limited in the TCG last month. Harp Horror is one of the main extenders, since summoning a monster from the deck is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, summoning effect in the game. This orthopedic percussion works similarly to Harp Horror, but instead of summoning from the deck, it summons from the graveyard, which provides the engine with much needed recursion and recycling. Well, at least the name of this monster is made out of two archetypes. Not like Perform Pal or Dice Synchron, which is made out of three. Funnily enough, I guess the lower number of archetypes in one's name make them more playable. Go figure. Anyway, this is a great way to set up other orcas in the graveyard. That's why it's a valid card to send to the grave as soon as possible. Gears is one of the starters when it comes to the engine, due to everything else activating by getting banished from the grave. Not to mention it can provide a token in order to start lane climbing as soon as possible. The final main deck monster in the Orcust engine is, of course, a world legacy card. God damn it. The ability to bring back an Orcust monster from the banishment provides even more combo material, allowing for near infinite link climbing. I mentioned previously that the Orcust exotic monsters are used to provide utility, and there's no better example than Galtea. She's the Orcust link monster with the lowest rating, making her the easiest to summon. Additionally, her ability to recycle a banished machine monster, not necessarily an Orcust one, and setting 
an orchid spell or trap directly to the field, which plays around Ash and Draw by the way, is nothing to scoff at. Especially when you set an Omni Negate like this card. Its utility doesn't end here though, since it can be banished from the graveyard in order to add a Dark Machine monster from the deck or banishment directly to the hand. It really helps in reaching the climax of the duel. Ooh, you suck! Alternatively, Galatea can set this field spell, which is one of a kind when it comes to its effect, making for some very interesting interactions that will frustrate the opponent, since it's not only their turn anymore. Galatea's big brother, in both lore and card design, is another link monster that sees play in the Orcist engine. The ability to recycle two machine monsters, not necessarily Orcist ones, paired with non-targeting spot removal allows Longearsu to better orchestrate your victory. Longearsu is one of the more interesting cards in the Orcist extra deck. It's the first Xyz monster that can be summoned using a link monster as material, which is a very interesting summoning condition. Not only that, but it also provides mass protection from destruction and non-targeting spot removal. And now, the expert on everything Orcus, Patrick from Fusion YGO, will take it from here. Okay, so the Orcus engine as a whole. Let's talk about it, shall we? The Orcus engine has a, quite a few different variations. Historically, the Orcus engine was like two or three hard pourers, typically three, let's be real, two Orcus nightmares, a world wand, sometimes two, it depends on what your build was, a symbol skeleton, if not two, and some crazy people would run Bombard in the main. You can, it depends on your list. Your extra deck would typically have two Galateas with two Dingirsus and one Long Gearsu. You would also have an Orcus Crescendo and a Babel, and in some lists you'll run the Return for the extra draw. That's historical, though. If we ain't in history, we're in the present. Because it's a gift, and so is Harpoor back at one. So, the current list, you're going to have to run one Harpoor. You can't run more, because it's limited, which is silly, but we're stuck with one, so we're going to have one of the boy. You want to run at least two Nightmare. Unless you're running a list like Super Heavy Samurai Orcus, you, having two is just important to have one in the deck to be dumped off of. Wait for it, the new guy. Welcome, new guy. Gearsu, the Orcus Mag Knight. You're typically going to run three of it as it's the best starter for the archetype itself as it's got an Armageddon Knight effect and a Phantom Sky Blaster effect and they just had a baby and said, you're an Orcist card. You're a World Legacy card, but you're an Orcist card. I know what you are. You're going to want at least one Symbol Skeleton. Most cases it is just one. It's the same with World One. In most cases it's just going to be one. Your recursiveness is so strong, it's not even funny. So having one World Wand, one Symbol Skeleton is fine. You're typically only going to run one Crescendo and one Babel. Babel recurs itself. Crescendo, once you use it once, you should win the game. The build that I recommend is this. If you're using the Orcist engine, and you're not building an Orcist theme deck, but you're building an Orcist engine, the strongest version of it, in my humble opinion, is three gears through the Orcist Mech Knight. One Orcist Harpoor, two copies of Orcus Nightmare, one copy of Symbol Skeleton, one copy of World Wand, with one copy of Crescendo, and one copy of Babel. You are still able to intermittently add in orchestra Orchestrated Return if you want it. As for the extra deck, you'll pretty much always go with two Galatea. She is the best girl. We all simp for her. You will always run Two copies of Dingirsu, the craziest boss monster in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. That's not true, but he's really, really strong and he's great and I love him. Uh, one copy of Longirsu. Longirsu's sending effect is crazy strong. Having access to it is awesome. And then, depending on what you're running, you can throw in the big boy himself in Orcustrian. I still recommend it in the Scrapped Orcus variant, as it's a machine that can attack when you use things like Urgent Schedule. That is the Orcus engine in a nutshell. Here are the pros. You will survive, you will grind really, really well. If you make good choices and you are making very smart and sound decisions, you can grind almost at infinite. Almost, not quite, but you can in theory go for a very, very long time and stay in games far past the point most decks would die. The pros also include consistency, 
as it's a dark themed archetype, you'll have a lot of very powerful consistency cards that some archetypes, especially the fire decks, until now bonfire, don't have access to. So having access to things like Allure of Darkness is insane in this kind of a deck. The cons, however, are one, Bystealers just exist to make your life hell. Because of the Bystealers' existence, it can be very difficult. So the way to supplement that is to play the Bystealers, Bystealers yourself. There's a lot of graveyard hate too. So your pros are very high, your cons are very low. It is a very fun deck to be able to play. Uh, and I really, I have a great time with the engine. So these are the things I would see. Let me know what you think. And I guess, Jacolo, it's back to you. Thank you, Patrick, for the expertise. Now, all that's left is the question, how much moolah one has spent for the entire engine? Considering the fact that Galatea, which is the most expensive card in it, costs around 3 euros on average, I would say not that much. According to my calculations, as things stand right now, the entire engine would cost a whopping 9 euros on a card market, shipping not included. It's really cheap considering what it can do and how flexible it is. And that'll be it for today's episode. Patrick, do you have any last words before we wrap it up? Jacolo, thank you so much for having me on the video. I greatly appreciate it. We just broke a thousand subscribers recently, so we will see you guys. I'll see you around, buddy. I uh, can't wait to hang out with you some more and do some more stuff in the future, but this has been a blast. And just like I predicted, I'm getting paged. Also, thank you for joining me on this one. I really learned a lot. And guys, remember to subscribe to Fusion YGO. The link is going to be in the description. And with that, I'll also see you next time. Borrowing their outro. Good luck. Have fun.